I brought a book. <laughs> this is one of the 25 books on the American Library Association Notable Books list. You can find some paper copies out at the Indigo Bridge table that's in the entryway. And while I'm at it, you can buy a few books there as well. So I want you all to be aware of that. Perfect, perfect this year that this book from the Notable Books list, The Unlikely Pilgrimage of Harold Fry by Rachel Joyce, is this year's One Book, One Lincoln selection. I hope a lot of you have read it. I hope that those of you who haven't will be soon. And mostly I hope that you're gonna have a lot of conversations about this book. It's a novel about a man whose name is Harold Fry. Harold Fry gets a card one day from his old friend Queenie. He worked with her years ago. She says, I just want you to know I'm dying of cancer, and I want you to know that I appreciate what a good friend you were to me. It leads to something crazy. Harold Fry sets out on a pilgrimage to see Queenie before she dies, unplanned, on foot, 600 miles. The media picks up on his story. He gets a lot of hangers on. Eventually, they fall away, and it's just Harold on his walk to Queenie, Harold reflecting on what's important and what's essential. And it works because Rachel Joyce creates these singular characters. And she can do wonders with the English language. It works because Harold Fry is an ordinary guy who's always just done ordinary things. And now he's doing something extraordinary. I'd like to take a personal minute now to talk about something in this book, which is cancer. Last year at TEDx, I talked about a nonfiction book about cancer called The Emperor of All Maladies by Siddhartha Mukherjee, a wonderful readable book about cancer. What I didn't know at the time was that in December, my husband would be diagnosed with cancer of the esophagus stage four, and he would die of that in seven short weeks. So between TEDx of last year and March of this year when I read this book, everything had changed. What I learned from that, though, is that the of all the, in the midst of all the awfulness that is cancer in a loved one, there are a few gifts. And one of those is a crazy focus where the things that are important and are essential are what are within your focus. And if one can manage to keep the focus on what is important, those authentic relationships with your people, and if you can keep your focus on what is the little, each little thing, each little explosion in your senses, if you can keep that focus, then in the midst of loss, you will find, I have found remarkable meaning. What I love about this book is that Harold Fry finds that focus. And so I recommend to you, I hope you will read, I hope you will talk about The Unlikely Pilgrimage of Harold Fry by Rachel Joyce. See you at the library. It's from this year's Notable Books list, and it's called Behind the Beautiful Forevers, Life, Hope, Life, Death, and Hope in a Mumbai Undercity by Catherine Boo. She's a writer for The New Yorker and is a Pulitzer Prize winner for some of her newspaper writing. In this case, she now lives in India, married to a man from India, and she became aware of this whole community of people living in slums alongside Mumbai's international airport. And this is the story of some of these people. She begins the book by introducing Abdul, a teenager, who is helping his family accumulate wealth in these incredible circumstances. He sorts trash and then sells it to recyclers. And his whole family has some kind of role to play in both picking, sorting, and selling trash. Boo goes on then to introduce this whole cast of characters from this area called Anawadi. It's a place really with no sanitation, almost no electricity, often no privacy because what's between you and your neighbors is a blanket. And the people there live in circumstances where the bureaucracy is stacked against them, expectations of money that is stacked against them, and yet they show this remarkable resourcefulness. After she introduces several people, then she gets going on an actual story where one family accuses a neighbor of an awful crime. And at that point, 
all the attention and resources go to keeping people out of jail, to paying fines, to pay for lawyers. And you see how all of this attention goes in just one direction as this incredible thing happens. A little bit about in the library world, we're often asked, what's a good book to read? In fact, there's a name for this. It's called Reader's Advisory. So if you leave with nothing else today, you'll know in the world of libraries, we call that Reader's Advisory. And a hot question, as we were discussing at lunch in the world of Reader's Advisory, is what do we find compelling about misery and evil? And I think part of it is perspective. And I think for a lot of us, we read a book like this and we think, OK, I've got a better idea of where my problems fit into the world of problems. I think the other thing that happens is that we get to know people we wouldn't know otherwise. And so Catherine Boo shows us these people of Anawadi. She shows us their hopes, their dreams, their incredible resourcefulness. She leads us to maybe know them and understand them and hopefully have empathy for them. My hunch is that as people are flying out of the international airport near Mumbai, they look down and they just see this mass of shacks, this mass of structure, this mass of people. She shows us the individuals. I, as a citizen of the world, need to know about those individuals. I need to allow myself to be uncomfortable in reading about them. I, I need to recognize that I should be willing to, be, to experience their discomfort a little bit. I'm not saying it's an easy book to read, but I'm saying it's well written, it's fascinating, and it's worthwhile. And I hope that you will choose to read Behind the Beautiful Forevers by Catherine Boo. See you at the library.